Now we are going to talk about dextramonads, but only partial dextramonads. <laughs> only. <laughs> only. <laughs> So since we have two, two minutes, the speaker of the next talk, you are. Okay, good. <laughs> you have your talk in, on that machine? Okay. Can I go? Okay, so thanks, Theo, for being here, and we are waiting to hear about partial dextromonads. So thank you. Uh, so the question that we wanted to answer in this talk is essentially how to define effects in the programming language F star. Uh, but first I will uh, show you how we use effects uh, in F star. So let's say you want to write uh, a dec um, like a stateful program that just decreases the state. So assuming the state is just a natural number. So you just get the state and uh, put in the state x minus 1. Uh, th then in F star you would uh, annotate your uh, return type with the fact that you use the effect uh, state, which we write as <coughs> T. Uh, but you also have more information. You also have some specifications attached to it, so you have a pre and post condition. So here, for instance, you, we could say that we require uh, the, the initial state as zero to be uh, greater than one. Uh, that's because uh, we want the state to <coughs> still be a net, so we want to decrease it by one. And then the post condition is going to say that the final state S1 uh, is just the initial state minus one. And more generally, you can also conclude about the result, which I call R here, but uh, since it's a unit, we can just uh, ignore it. And in this setting, we have uh, get and put R also uh, with their own specifications. Uh, so get has no precondition, so you can all use it everywhere at any time, so this is the uh, true uh, precondition, and it ensures that uh, in the end the final state is the same as the initial state, we didn't change the memory, and the final result is also the state. Uh, and for put, it's something similar, we just uh, return, uh, we just said that the final uh, state is the same as the value that we put inside. And uh, what F star does is that it elaborates this uh, to uh, like a monad, so essentially the state monad. So we have here a bind uh, between the get and the put, so it's essentially just a rephrasing of this the thing on the right. Uh, but this bind is more than that because it also talks about specifications. So actually we have so the bind uh, at the level, let's say, of the syntax or the computation, and we also have the bind at the level of specifications. And um, what we want is, is to say that when we bind these two uh, specifications of first the get and then the put, then it should be smaller than uh, the specification we wanted to give to the whole program. So this uh, smaller than, it's saying essentially it's the left-hand side is more precise, or you could say that the post condition on the left implies the post condition on the right, and the uh, pre on the right implies the pre on the on the left. Um, and all of these uh, notions we just can like synthesize in the notion of Dijkstra monad. So this is uh, like a monad uh, first, so you have, uh, it's indexed by a type, but it's also indexed by a specification, which we call small w. And this specification also has to live in a, in a monad itself, so that's the bind of the specifications that I showed earlier. Uh, and the order is the one for the preciseness. Um, and then you have that the return of the Dijkstra monad is indexed by the return of the specification monad, and the uh, bind is all is very similar in that uh, respect. And finally, the order appears, for instance, with the subcomputation uh, rule, which is essentially a subtyping rule, saying that if you have a program with specification W which is uh, smaller than W prime, then you can actually uh, move it to, uh, to give it the specification W prime. And here I use the pure uh, effect of F star, which is, uh, as you can expect, just uh, no effect, but it has this pre and post conditions. Um, and uh, Dijkstra monads for all is uh, a work that introduces uh, a general way of building Dijkstra monads. Uh, from both uh, a, a computation monad M 
and uh, specification mono w, and uh, together with uh, what we call theta, which is just um, monad morphism between the two. So essentially, it's um, th the, the theta and the w consist in the sem semantics of your program. You're just uh, giving it a, a meaning. So you associate to each program its specification. And then we can just define it, uh, the Dijkstra monad, by uh, taking a computation such that the, its, um, like specif its own specification is smaller than the W that we want to check. In the case of states that I've uh, presented before, um, then we can just use the state monad as the, specific, uh, as the computation monad with the usual return and bind. And for the specification monad, we will use something slightly more general than just having a pre and post condition, which is just a predicate transformer. So you take a post condition on uh, final value and final uh, sta uh, state, and uh, you return a precondition on the initial state. So essentially, it's, it's telling you uh, which uh, precondition you have to uh, verify in order to have the post condition to hold. Uh, and then, the, for instance, the return of this uh, uh, specification monad is just taking, so you take a post condition P and then you return a precondition on the initial state S0. And this is just saying that uh, the post condition should hold on both the value X and the initial state because nothing happened. And for bind, it's just uh, co using a continuation essentially. Um, and in this setting, then the um, uh, monad morphism that we care about is just saying well, uh, you take uh, the, your program, you evaluate it in the initial state, uh, you get the final value and final state, and then you just verify that the post uh, condition holds on those. Uh, so now if I go back to uh, our uh, previous example, so I, I was saying we were using nat as a state, and in F star, nat is just a subtype of uh, integers, which are non-negative, and uh, crucially, the fact that we can say that x minus one is indeed still a natural number relies on the uh, precondition. So this is the notion of partiality that we uh, that I want that we consider in this talk. So uh, we cannot just make a separation between the syntax and the semantics because we need some information from the semantics to be well typed even in the in the computation already. Uh, other examples that you can write in F star includes, for instance, if you write uh, the head function, you don't have to write the nil case uh, in your pattern matching if you just assume that your list is non-empty. Or uh, to in, the, in the state case, uh, you could also just say that you get twice from the state, then you should be able to assert or to prove that x and y are equal. You uh, might have that as a precondition to a continuation, for instance. Um, so this means that you also need this in kind of information deeply. You need to be able to keep uh, having access to the, the precondition. Um, so the way we modify uh, the Dijkstra monad for all setting is uh, by uh, adding an extra constructor to our monads, which we called require. So it's just saying that um, if you give me a, a, a proposition, uh, and then I will give you a proof of it in the monad. And then uh, in the Dijkstra, at the Dijkstra monad level, you just have the same thing as, as, as always. And the, um, we just need the monad morphism to also extend this um, uh, to preserve the require. And the way we can build uh, such uh, a new partial Dijkstra monad uh, for state is by mo modifying slightly the, the state monad by adding this G here which we uh, call the garden monad. I, I don't know if it has another name, but essentially it's just a pair of a precondition <coughs> and a, a value that is guarded by this precondition. So it takes a proposition, a pre, and then a, f a function. So essentially you have, it's given by uh, this pre uh, precondition and a proof that, um, and a function from, uh, that assumes this precondition, sorry. Uh, and in this setting, so the, also we need to modify the, uh, the monad morphism. Uh, so now, you, when you give it the initial state to your value, you, you actually get a precondition and then a guarded function. And what we require is that this precondition has a proof. And then we can just uh, continue with it. And actually, in, in uh, F star, everything like this is uh, 
the, I mean, the, the pre is, uh, is, in, is a proposition, so it's irrelevant, so we don't have to care about the fact that we actually apply it. Um, and this, uh, when you have this monads with, uh, extended with the require operator, then you can get a partial effect in F-star. That means that we are able to define uh, effects in F-star that uh, actually work, um, which wasn't the case with the Dijkstra monad for all uh, before. Um, this generalizes, or, or uh, let, uh, let's say the, the Dijkstra monad for free paper also fits in this, in this setting. Uh, so this means that state and exceptions can be dealt with. Uh, we can also deal with free monads by just adding a node for this, um, uh, for this require, uh, meaning we can deal with IO and non-determinism and also for, with non-termination. Um, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Theo. Questions? So, from my, from what I understand, is um, you you have this extra monad that somehow computes the weakest preconditions based on what your post condition is. So I was wondering if that like generates relatively complicated right. proof obligations in the end for relatively simple facts, and if you have then some support for fulfilling um, those. Yes, it. Uh, I guess when you define an effect, you need indeed in F star uh, sometimes to like massage things a bit, like try to have it be efficient in what it computes, like the preconditions it computes. Uh, right now, uh, I mean, it works for most of these examples, just, uh, but the non-termination is a bit problematic because you have uh, exponential blow up uh, in the, because you need to differentiate between terminating and non-terminating and then uh, this, doesn't work so well. So um, indeed, that's something that we, uh, I, I'm not an expert in messaging these things, but I need to be become one, I guess, if I want to exp use those. Any more questions? Do you have thoughts on how you can use the lessons you learned here for F star in other systems, other proof assistants, other programming languages? Um, at what level you mean, especially specifically about the partiality, or maybe yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's um, that's something I, I'm still not sure about. Like in uh, in Coq, you would just I guess <coughs> take the precondition has just a. An argument, and um, but I guess this is really um, linked to the fact that we have automation in F star. That's just the way things go. You uh, so you don't want to provide the argument yourself. Um, so yeah, I don't. At, at this point, I don't know. It could still be possible that in systems like Coq the verification actually becomes easier if you take this perspective. Even though you don't have to take it, you can do whatever you want. Right. This might give you better proofs. Yeah, um, yeah um, I mean, I, I'm wondering if it might help, uh, I, maybe at another level, at le the level of like goal management. Uh, uh, I've seen uh, similar things, for instance, in uh, like cubicle where you have uh, constraints and maybe this uh, I mean, I've, so, I've seen things that were a bit similar by uh, John Sterling, where uh, they have some like post conditions on the goal to uh, deal with the equalities at like <coughs> zero and one. But I don't know exactly. Uh, I mean, I've, I haven't worked on that. So, thank you. Any more question? C can you comment on the integration of the, those ideas in, in the actual F star implementation? So you mean, can we um, uh, have like a plugin to, or just integrate it into F star so that it generates the uh, effect itself? 
Um, I guess this was, was probably one of the main motivations in the sense that, well, that's what you tried with the, 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 the Dice Trauma Net for All. That's what Dice Trauma Net for Free also does, right? You, you can just define effects directly. Um, I guess we're still unhappy with the fact that we have different kinds of examples and uh, that do not, there's no really um, nice way of always generating this require thing. And we wanted to try to find first if there was a way of generating it automatically, but it seems tough <laughs> or not possible. I don't know. How well do these things compose? So, supposing I have two partial Dijkstra monads, mm -hmm. and I want to write a program that uses both of them, and two different, completely different predicates that are unrelated. I mean. um, so, at, at the moment, if you want to compose two Dijkstra monads, you just need to build, like, yourself <laughs> the, the join. Um, uh, if you have, uh, if if you were only to deal with uh, like a free monads, then like I'll, like algebraic effects, then I guess you could do it more in a more principled way. But yeah, there's uh, even then the specifications. It, there's no clear. I mean, like merging free monads is easy, but merging specifications is unclear because y you might have different things. Th there might be non-trivial interactions. Yeah, right. right. I mean, because in the free monad you can have like uh, non-determinism, but you could also have uh, probabilities, and then what happens if you mix probabilities with exceptions? And uh, I don't know. It's uh, something I've been thinking about, but I don't see any generic way of doing it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.